All right, getting ready for enrobing the entremet. And I've got here white uh, candy melts or basically white chocolate glaze. Um, this uh, was a Ghirardelli white chocolate candy melts. Some um, sweetened condensed milk and then some bloomed gelatin. All of this are on the recipe for the uh, white chocolate um, mirror glaze. In the pot here, I've got some corn syrup, about 150 grams of corn syrup, 150 grams of sugar, and about 75 grams of water. We're gonna bring this up to boil, and we're going to uh, temp it to 217 degrees. Okay, so this is the recipe for the white chocolate mirror glaze. And as you can see, I've circled the half batch. I'm only gonna need half a batch because I'm not gonna need to uh, have the entire batch to just do the small amount of entremets I'm doing. These are the Ghirardelli white vanilla flavored melting wafers. Found these over at Target. They're pretty reasonable, um, but they are the key to making sure you get a good opaque um, mirror glaze. And then I've got this set up. I've got a little half sheet pan here and I've got some parchment uh, to capture the glaze and then a screen. I'm gonna bring out the entremet and unmold it in uh, from its frozen state and put it uh, on the screen so that it can then be enrobed. Okay, so now you can see that I brought the sugar and corn syrup and water to a boil. I turn this fire down just a little bit. But I want to get it to 217 degrees. That's what the recipe calls for, 217. So that's not very high, actually. That's not very much beyond boiling. So we're at 212, 215, 217. So we're there. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to pour this over the candy melts, the sweet condensed milk, and the gelatin. This is going to melt everything. You're sort of making a ganache with a sugar syrup because you're making it with basically chocolate candy melts, sweet condensed milk, and uh, the gelatin. But it's like, just like making a ganache. All right, let that sit. Let that uh, start to sit up a little bit. I'm grabbing the spatula here. I just want to make sure the gelatin gets underneath everything so it has a chance to melt. Let the heat do its work to melt all of this together. Now, just like a ganache, we can bring this all together as an emulsion, just with a spatula like this. To make life a little easier, um, I've got an immersion blender. I think I'll use that, and it'll just make life go a little faster. But you can bring it together just with a simple hand tool. Okay, so as we're waiting here, we're waiting for this mirror glaze to cool down. Mirror glaze needs to be 95 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's too warm, it'll melt the entremet. If it's too cold, um, it'll start to actually thicken and harden because of the gelatin in it. And it's already starting to get quite viscous, but it's still at 118, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So it needs to cool down. The other thing good about letting it sit to cool down is the bubbles that form on top will start to dissipate. We want this to be free of bubbles when we go to and roll our, our uh, entremet. So I'm just going to leave this to rest for a while. In the meantime, we've got some other, other things to do. So I'll move my screen here. I took a little bit of chocolate. And I decided, you know, if I'm going to make this entremet, I want to make it look nice. So I'm going to be, I melted a little bit of chocolate. And what I've been doing here is trying to pre-crystallize this small amount of chocolate. Just need to cool it down a little bit. 
this little decoration I made here is already hard. And this was when the chocolate was a little bit more tempered. Um, and all I did was took a drop of chocolate and I take a spatula and I just wave it in this direction to create something of a, of a fan. And this can then be lifted off the paper and it can be used as a decoration on the dessert. This chocolate on the other hand, I warmed it again to get it up to working temperature and I may have warmed it up to a point where it's out of temper. So we're gonna run a test. Just like always, when I temper chocolate, I like to run a test. So I'm just gonna let this little bit of chocolate here sit and just see how it does. It should be a few minutes to see if the test works. Yeah, so with the chocolate pre-crystallized, I take a little dot of chocolate about the size of a quarter. I'm gonna take my small spatula and we're just gonna make some sweeping arcs. And I do it a couple of times because I want to make sure that the chocolate is even thickness. The idea of being thick, thickness even is that um, if the thickness is even, then it will be equally strong. So I'll be able to lift it off the paper and it won't break. So we've got a couple of decorations ready to go. These will, these will harden and uh, we'll get set up here. I've got the entremet almost ready to come out and we'll get ready to roll. Okay, this is about where we left off last time when we had our entremet. And I recently just pulled it up from the plate because it was stuck down, but the paper came right off the bottom, just slid right off. And as you can see, this is going to be the top of the entremet. So as I go and give it a push, I'm gonna see if I can just push it right out of here. If it doesn't come out right away, because it's frozen, I'm gonna warm it up with my hands a little bit. And here it comes. I thought that the paper would come with it, but it's coming out without the paper. I can see that we have a little bit of extra around the top here, so I'm just going to trim that away. to lift this, I'm going to go from underneath and try to carefully place it on the screen. That way, causing it as few, as few fingerprints as possible. All right, so I'm going to give my mirror glaze a little bit of a stir here. You can use a ladle, you could use a measuring cup with a spout, whatever helps you to easily pour the mirror glaze. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour it slowly until it completely enrobes my entire dessert. Obviously, I have a lot more than I need here. That's the idea. I want to make sure that I get full coverage. Looking around the sides to make sure I don't have any empty spots. Once I'm pretty confident that everything is set, everything's covered, I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to let the cold that's in here from, the, from this being frozen to do the work of letting, setting up that gelatin. That gelatin will set up by itself just through the cold. And that's gonna create a beautiful mirror finish. You can probably already see it. 
Now a little bit later, after this has had a chance to set up a few for a few minutes, I want to have it you know, give it a chance to do that before I remove it. I'm going to be removing it from the screen and putting it on a plate. I'm going to go get a fresh plate ready, and we're going to plate this. Okay, so I think it's time to pull this off the screen and put it on a plate. I'm going to go underneath. Try to go underneath this entreme, and if I need to, I'll grab a second spatula to do the job. Have my plate ready. Okay, so we move that off of the screen onto a plate and wipe off my spatulas. And it's time to garnish and to do a little bit of sauce. I took some of the mirror glaze, just some extra mirror glaze. And of course I'm gonna use a paper cone. Put a little bit of that in my paper cone just to decorate the plate. And I added a tiny bit of food coloring to it just to give it some color, something besides white. Since I have a white plate, I figure we need to have something other than just white. Okay, who saw some plate? Got my chocolate fans. Because the mousse is starting to soften up a little bit, we should be able to put these opposing fans on top and they should be able to stay in pretty well and hold each other up. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. So, time for you to work on yours. And as you pull your entremet out, I want to see what you'd like to do with it. Something simple, usually every plate of dessert has to have at least three components. It needs to have a main item, it needs to have a sauce, and it needs to have a garnish. So, if you're looking to make a garnish, the best way to do that, one of the quickest ways to do it, of course you can use almost anything for a garnish, but I took a little bit of chocolate, I melted it in the microwave, I added a couple more chips of chocolate and quickly stirred it and I managed to get this into a pre-crystallized state and obviously it hardened up really nicely. It now needs to be broken up and remelted, but it doesn't take much to put together a small amount of uh, tempered chocolate when you need it. Anytime you need it, you can quickly temper a small amount and you don't need to temper a giant bowl full. Obviously, you can just temper the amount that you need. But then when it comes to sauce, I use a little bit of my same mirror glaze, just add a little bit of color to it. But obviously a sauce could be made. You could make a creme on glaze. You could very easily make some chocolate ganache and use that as a chocolate sauce. Any of those would be perfectly appropriate. Even some of the uh, candy melts. Some of these candy melts could very easily be made into decorations because they don't require tempering. And uh, you, could do, um, you, could, you could fashion a sauce with that as well. Anyway, have fun with this project and uh, let's see what kind of pictures you post so that we'll all see what kind of things you came up with.